All right, guys, I'm going to tell you how to do this uh, mod. Um, of course, you need your G9T and something soft to put it on so that uh, when we flip it over, the screen doesn't get damaged. Next, we're going to need an opening tool kit. Uh, the tool kit comes with four pieces. you got the suction cup for your LCD. We don't need this. Uh, you got your guitar pick, your screwdriver, and your plastic opening tool, which is what you're going to be using. Um, First, what you want to so do is Let's take start. your screwdriver and open up uh, the screws located here where my thumb is and also here where my thumb is. All right, with the screws um, removed, next you want to take your plastic opening tool and your guitar pick and you want to flip this G9T over like so and place it on the soft material. Oh, I've used the bubble wrap that came with the G9T. Next, you want to start opening up the back, and whenever the back starts popping off, you want to take your guitar pick and slide it in there to remove some of the tabs, but make sure not to um, crack any of the tabs. All right, so I found the easiest way to open this was actually to hold my hand like this on the bottom of uh, where the ports are and sliding a guitar pick into the, um, the slots going this direction and then uh, gently pulling out this way a little bit. Then taking this plastic opening tool and sliding it into each of these ports and just slowly tugging it up. And I did this for all of them and it's slowly coming out. So that's what you want to do to get this thing opened properly. Next what you want to do is, is you want to prop the Gemini uh, between your legs like this with the bottom side going upwards. Um, taking this guitar pick right here, sliding it into one of these knots here and just pulling it apart and it will slowly um, come apart like so. Alright, once you've removed this black plate, what you get is this thing right here. Oh, where we have the speakers um, glued to the back cover as well as the battery and they're both soldered to it so we're gonna have to just gently desolder um, either the speaker or the battery I, I prefer uh, desoldering the speakers because of the fact that um, it's just easier to work with alright next what you want to do is remove the battery there should be only two stickers that hold the battery in place uh, remove it from there and clean up uh, the residues. Uh, next, you want to take the uh, palm touchstone uh, dock and cover. And what you want to do is now you want to find out where you want to align the uh, the charging coils. So uh, what I want to do is put the charging coil directly behind this uh, GIT logo so that it's uh, right side up. So that means that this will be located here now and I can position the battery upwards because there's a bunch of uh, free space in the interior. So first let's take the uh, touchstone Uh, take a sharp point and start taking off this uh, adhesive layer uh, where it says uh, palm. Alright, so you want to keep this little sticky thing so that it'll hold on to your um, board a lot better. Next, what you want to do is you want to take off this amplified shield. This shield is very important. Do not lose it because if you lose it, then the uh, induction currents will not target this coil. So you want to remove this induction. Um, this amplified shield. Alright, next let's remove the actual board. This, um, this this coil right here is connected to this PCB which then converts it over to um, 5 volt, so let's remove that. Alright, and then the last part is to remove the magnets. Alright, so now that we've removed all the components, we can actually throw away this back cover. So now you want to put the magnets onto that little sticky cover that I told you to remove and this is the direct imprint of what it'll take to match up with the dock 
So you want to place it wherever you feel the um, the coil should be. So mine's going to be right here. So I placed them on, and I have it on my dock right now. But the thing is, the back case is too thick. So what we need to do is now remove this um, this little sticky tape, and it should reveal where the magnets are positioned. Now, the next thing you want to do is take a permanent marker and mark where the magnets are. So now with the markers, now you want to take a Dremel and Dremel out a small portion of it. Just sand it down, but don't actually go through it. So the recess that I made right here is where the magnet's going to be. And the thing is, once you place it on uh, into its position and put the dock underneath it, you should be able to raise it up and the dock should come with it. And that's when you know you have a very good connection. So from the indents, you'll notice that I actually moved the cut site upwards. This is where the center of mass is and this was not. So I uh, relocated, uh, I made the cut, and I've also removed the painter's tape. So up next, I'm going to put um, the mags on, I'm going to glue them on, and then after that, I'm going to prep up uh, the site to uh, begin applying some liquid electrical tape. This is because the edges are metallic and this might interfere with the coil. So I've covered up the hole in the back and I've prepped up uh, the inside for uh, liquid electrical tape right here. So while it's still drying you want to actually begin removing the tape before it completely dries off. I've done that already. Now you want to glue the coil to the case. What you want to do is you want to lay it down like so, put the coil on uh, inside the hole and then start gluing around the corners. And I put four dabs of hot glue on there. Now when I put the amplified shield on. After the shield's on, uh, you can place some electrical tape on top to clean it up. Now you want to take a multimeter and see if it works. And it does. It goes up to 5.6 volts. Right now, painter's tape is covering the coil that is on the back temporarily. Next, what I'm going to do is remove the tape. I'm going to apply liquid electrical tape to the coil so that it's airtight and uh, moisture free. And then after that, I am going to put a sticker over it. All right, let's focus on the board now. What you want to do now is remove the screws here, here, and here as well as unplug the ribbon cable for the LCD here and here and you'll also have to remove the ribbon cable for the camera here. What uh, you want to do is take the antenna and just unhook it from here and you'll actually have to flip this board this way because this IDE style cable for the side buttons does not uh, unplug. After you've removed the ribbon cable, you'll have to remove these two screws located on the right side. All right, with the board uh, removed, you'll actually want to focus on this outlet right here, which is the power outlet. Now, all right, so let's pinpoint the positive negatives. I'm going to turn it around. This right here is the negative, and this right here is the positive. All right, so I've wired some 26 gauge wires to the positive and negative end of the power terminal. You'll notice that they're uh, both red, which is a no-no, but since I'm only dealing with two wires, I'm able to do this. If uh, you find yourself wondering which wire is which, just take a, um, a multimeter right over here, plug in the power supply, and then test the, the end of the wire to see if it's negative or positive. Here's a mining tip for you new people. You want to create a twisted pair between the positive and negative ends here, as well as create a tension point away from the soldering points here. So what I've done was 
I soldered my wires to the positive and negative terminal, and then I did a twisted pair and hot glued um, the wires to the board a little, um, maybe an inch away from the solder uh, points. And this is because if you were to tug on your wire, now the tension point is here instead of here. And if uh, you actually pull on a wire that is um, near the soldering point, the point itself might actually pull away from the board itself. So that is uh, very devastating. All right, so I've routed the wire over here, and I brought it back over to the back plate where I've uh, soldered to the positive and negative terminals of their respected um, ports. Then I've also created a, a tension port over here, so now I can pull on this and it won't damage um, this soldering terminal. So I have the battery uh, glued to the main body instead of the back plate now, which I feel is more um, utilitarian. And I have all the wires uh, re-soldered. Um, now this is the final product.